There we go, computers, all right. Um, I don't actually sign Raquel's paychecks. Uh, we, we use Trinet for that, they're, they're great. I would, you'd probably never get paid. I'm really terrible at stuff. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Um, I usually ask this at any time I give a talk. It's probably kind of a dumb question here, but how many of you have used NPM before? How many of you are here at your first NPM camp? Uh, anybody been using NPM since before it shipped with Node? Oh, a small, small, a few of you. Okay, so um, most of this is gonna be boring. You already know the story. Uh, so once upon a time, there was this thing called Node.js, uh, and the, the whole community actually fit on a small, relatively low activity mailing list. Um, and then Ryan went to Berlin, Ryan Dahl, the inventor of Node.js, went to Berlin and gave this talk. If you've never seen it, I recommend looking it up. It's kind of amazing, like, how much Node is still kind of doing the same kind of, you know, following some of those same principles and which ones have kind of changed over time. But anyway, he gave this talk and a lot more people showed up on the mailing list. So there was all this like really interesting work being done. People would say, oh, I, you know, I wrote this thing, it connects to a, uh, some kind of database and to install it, you have to like make install and copy this thing over here in the sim link and the, 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 the. oh, so, so difficult. Um, and Node was really low level, so it was like you needed to be able to use other people's modules in order to do much of anything. Um, so what I did is I, I took this little bash script that I'd been using and I turned it into a, a Node program. And I sent a bunch of pull requests to a bunch of people's projects to add package.json files to their, uh, to their programs, to their modules. And then people started doing this weird thing where they did it themselves without me nudging them, which was kind of neat. Um, and I, I had this idea that when, um, when everyone is pushing really hard in a particular direction, sometimes the best thing to do is not to join them and push with them, but just kind of figure out how you can reduce friction so that they can go faster. And that was kind of the, the goal of NPM. Uh, one of the mostly non-technical innovations that was happening around the same time and, and kind of rising in popularity around the time that I wrote NPM originally was this thing called Sember or semantic versioning. NPM was one of the first package managers to, uh, to leverage this in a big way. Now it's kind of just obvious. That's how you do versions. Um, but, um, and we, we've kind of evolved NPM with the Sember spec, so there were actually cases, uh, there was a moment there where like Sember spec had moved ahead of NPM, we had to kind of catch up. Um, it, uh, the thing about Sember that's kind of interesting is it, it, doesn't, it doesn't solve all of the problems, right? It's not like magic that makes dependencies suddenly easy to manage. Um, but what it does do is it gives us a set of words and kind of a shared vocabulary to talk about these problems. So you probably all have some idea of what like a patch version or a major version or a minor version is. Um, and you may have had some passionate arguments about whether Sember is like the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. And I'm here to tell you that I disagree with both of those points of view a lot. Uh, the, the, the semantics live in you, they live inside of us, in our brains, they're not in the numbers. The numbers are just these tokens that we can kind of manipulate. Um, small modules is another thing that's commonly associated with NPM. It, it wasn't actually an original design goal of, uh, of the package manager from day one. I don't, and I don't think that we've ever really done anything to try and make modules smaller. It's just kind of what happens when people can write small modules, right, they, they tend to. Um, so it's, it's sort of like the, the end result of increasing modularity in programs. You just say, well, you know, why not have a wrapper, you know, a packaging wrapper for this one function? Um, and then you, you know, once it's a thing, it needs documentation, it needs tests, there's kind of this mental shift to treat it like a first class citizen. Um, so the, the, the value of small modules ultimately is just whatever the value is of modularity. People can iterate in parallel, you get code quality and some isolation, but um, obviously this, every strategy has trade-offs. There's, um, uh, once you have more smaller modules that do more things, you have kind of this assembly problem and a, a greater depth of abstraction instead of having, you know, to deal with all the abstraction in one place, so it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. I think, I think one of my favorite aspects of NPM is actually that, um, and, and what I've 
found in doing this is the, the surprises where like you solve one kind of problem only to realize that there was this much bigger problem that was kind of waiting behind it. So we get to increasingly be frustrated by more interesting things, which is uh, <laughs> kind of a, a career goal of mine as a software developer and, and uh, entrepreneur. Um, actually, it, it all kind of started, um, it started for me about seven years ago as sort of an unplanned adventure because I was actually trying to work out a way to, uh, to write a web framework in Node. This is before there were any web frameworks in Node. Um, there weren't like, you know, I don't know, 50 like there are now probably, but uh, I was trying to figure out a way to build this, this nice framework for building websites. And um, I needed to use other people's code, and so I figured, well, before I write a web framework, I'm gonna write a package manager, because why not? And I probably never would have done that if I was actually like going to work every day at a job. Um, you know, why would you write a package manager to build a website, that's stupid. <laughs> but like, the, the, the whole thing is just kind of this testament to the unreasonable effectiveness of taking some time off. Um, some of you who follow me on Twitter probably know I'm a big proponent of guaranteed basic income or universal basic income. This is really why, because when people have a few extra brain cycles, they create interesting creative things. Um, NPM never would have happened I, I, if I hadn't kind of found myself in this position. I was sort of a, a very, unhappy workaholic for most of my 20s and finally snapped and was like, I've been, I've been working my ass off and saving all this money, like, what's the point? I'm gonna take some time off and just eat my savings and see what happens. I was totally burnt out, and so I wrote a package manager. That's what you do. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say that, like, quitting your job and, and sort of, like, saying screw it is the best option or even a reasonable option for everybody, but it's like, if you have this, come up in your, in your realm of possibilities at some point in your life, like very seriously consider it, it's kind of great. So this thing got popular, and the problem with making a thing in your spare time during temporary unemployment is that, and then that thing getting popular is you have to keep figuring out how to make it survive while it tries to crush everything that you love. Um, and what I found was this, this nights and weekends project for a single individual and like running on infrastructure that was donated free of charge, it was first from, uh, uh, couch IO, and then it became Couch One, and then it got handed off to Iris Couch, and then that got acquired by Nojitsu, but it was really actually all the same people in the same servers the whole time. Um, this system works really great for a while until it suddenly doesn't, and so there were, by the end of 2013, um, there were some pretty awful ops problems, uh, scaling issues, stuff would go down on a weekend, and I'd be like out of town and just not hear about it until Monday, so it'd be like, no NPM this week. Um, <laughs> Thing is though, it, what, we, what we found and what was sort of surprising is like in 2010, when NPM would hiccup and be unavailable for a day, it was like no big deal, it was a thing I had to do. Um, in 2013, it was a big, big deal. It was completely unacceptable. People got really mad about it. Um, and so the problem really is that we needed, you know, this, this uh, one person on a sabbatical and then kind of keeping it going with their nights and weekends time totally works for a really small thing and it's a great way to do really creative, interesting work. But like actual stuff that people are depending on, you need to have professionals really dedicating their working hours, like reasonable working hours, not 80 a week, um, dedicating their, their professional attention to like solving the current problems and also planning for the, to solve the next ones that are gonna come up. The thing about exponential growth is that it's really hard to have sort of a gut reckon about it. Anything that's exponential tends to, like, tends to just be continually surprising. But, um, you know, because our, our brains are not evolved to deal with exponential growth, but it's pretty straightforward to do the math of it. Like, it's actually not that complicated to sit down and plan, okay, here's where we need to be next year. Yes, that sounds crazy. Yes, that sounds wild. That is completely not reasonable that we'll scale that big. But I can tell that we are going to because that's, that's what the graph says. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, so, Starting a company sounded kind of fun. Um, a bunch of companies out there had said to me that they wanted to give me money to be able to host their private code on NPM and also to ensure that it didn't um, go down all the time. So that seemed like a pretty good plan. Start a company, make some money. Um, first order of business was operational excellence and the last talk of this conference today you'll hear uh, CJ Silverio talking about I assume some, I haven't actually seen her talk, but I assume it's got some touches on how we keep the registry not on fire. Um, CJ is NPM CTO. 
The next thing we did was we built an enterprise version of the registry that you can pay money to have inside your company's firewall. Uh, the next thing we did was making it so that you can use private modules on the registry that we host so you don't have to install it in, inside your company's firewall if that's not a thing you care about. And along the way, we've been working on improving the CLI, the website, uh, writing docs, answering support emails, and now apparently throwing conferences. So why do we do all this stuff? Um, NPM is here to help you make things with JavaScript. It's, the registry is really uh, a crucial part of modern open source development. And we really have a, we feel like we have a duty, I feel like we have a duty to, to keep that going, to keep that running. And at this point, to be completely honest, like, I don't, I don't actually know what like, any of these things do. Um, I don't know how it works. And, <laughs> and that's good, because when I knew how it works, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at DevOps. Uh, it's the, but the great thing about a company is like, you, can, you can hire people who are good at the stuff you're bad at. And then you can just say, OK, your problem now. Here's some money. Um, <laughs> And these numbers, these numbers are huge. Look at this. Like, that's like five billion downloads in the last month. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and like three, 300,000 some odd modules now, 320,000. Um, it's, right now there's like four million humans, a little over four million human beings using NPM on a pretty regular basis. Unfortunately, most of them could not make it to NPM camp. Um, <laughs> When our, when our servers hiccup, like I mentioned before, I mean, in two, you thought 2013 was bad. Like, it takes so much less of a hiccup now to make people very upset. The internet gets mad. They have, they have strong feelings. They send them to us. Uh, we, we get calls from the media when that happens. Um, it just, just sort of speaking personally, like, repeated exposure to NPM's usage graphs in this exponential curve has kind of got me, like, broken inside. Like, I'm, I'm just not amazed by large numbers anymore. I know one day, like, Lori's going to storm into my office and be like, oh, my God, we had 10 billion downloads yesterday. I'll be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> giant numbers, giant numbers. Um, everybody, the, the fact is just everybody uses NPM for everything, and it's kind of awesome, but it will probably never stop feeling weird to me. Uh, so when I, when I first started splitting modules out from the, the NPM code base, NPM was originally this, like, total monolith project. It's still, like, almost a monolith project, but, like, Forrest and the team have really done a lot of work to keep you know, cutting things and organizing them a lot better. I, I left it in a total mess for them. Um, if you want to make a messy code base, uh, do something on your nights and weekends for four years. And, then, <laughs> uh, and it's, so anyway, I started splitting stuff into modules uh, about four years ago, and um, this one made a bunch of people really super excited, and it's not because anybody's excited about prototypal inheritance between I and I files. I think I'm the only one who's excited about that. Um, which doesn't make any sense to me, because config files are really exciting, but whatever. Uh, this, but anyway, this, this module was kind of the inspiration for doing this conference in a way, because we kept getting questions like, so I see NPM conf, and I did NPM install NPM conf, and like, it doesn't do anything. Like, when it, how do I, when's the conference? I thought it was some Easter egg that was gonna tell me like, how to buy a ticket or something. It's like, no, 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 it's for your INI files. Um, <laughs> but, uh, this conference is mostly not about config files, uh, only a little bit about config files. Um, so N NPMs, and we actually thought long and hard about this, like why actually do a conference anyway, right? It's like, maybe does that not even make sense? Um, NPMs already represented at pretty much every JS conference and meetup and event. Like there's somebody giving some talk about doing something with NPM. Um, and so we were kind of like, yeah, isn't it just gonna be like all of us telling people stuff? That seems kind of boring, I don't know. But, um, what we realized was kind of was lacking was an event to really try and bring the community together and have people share what they're doing with NPM out in the world and share it with each other and also kind of with us. So this is, uh, the, the talks today are mostly not NPM employees, but we do have a handful, um, myself included, obviously. And uh, it's the first conference, so it's a little, that we've, that we've thrown like this. It's a little bit of an experiment, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, mostly I'm really looking forward to seeing what all the other stuff that people do with NPM. Um, I just think JavaScript is cool and it's really fun to see people making things and especially making things with a thing that I help make. Uh, there's, there's a ton of really great stuff that I've seen lately, way more than I can fit on a slide, but you should probably check out some of these. Um, 
most of the, uh, or one of the, one of the fun things is that like a lot of these are actually ideas that I've had, right? Like Zeitco is a deployment thing, Greenkeeper like checks out which depths whenever they get updated and make sure that you can kind of stay up to date. Um, node security project is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a project to increase node security. Um, and there's like thousands of other things that don't fit there. But what's exciting is like, these are all stuff, that, things that I've thought at one point or another, like, ah, oh, I really want to build that. And then I didn't, because, you know, full-time job, and then somebody else did, which is great. And that full-time job, I felt like kind of helped facilitate that. Um, I was gonna end with some kind of like future plans of NPM Inc. type slide, but I looked back at all of the talks I've given about NPM over the last five or six years, and I always had something that was like, okay, and these are our future plans. And historically, I'm terrible at planning the future. I have no idea what we're gonna do. Like, all of my great big ideas we just never, ever, ever do. And then like, like here, somebody beats us to it. And they do a better job anyway, and they're using NPM anyway, so it's like, all right, well, we just have to keep the registry going so they can keep doing it then, that's our job. Um, there's like a time to make the donuts kind of feeling to it a little bit, but uh, yeah, so um, I do have some stuff about our actual plans. Uh, our actual plan is to keep working to make, the, make NPM the obvious, trusted, and essential tool for all web developers. So this community can keep growing, can keep building new things, we can go to new areas, do new stuff, and um, you know, the more that you don't notice that there is an NPM registry, the more that we can kind of like fade to the background and just be the platform, um, the, I think the better, like that's really what success feels like to me, even though it's sort of a, a silent partner in all of these apps. Um, and also, it's a non-trivial challenge to keep figuring out how to make a successful business out of this stuff so that we can keep the registry running and sort of have this ongoing sustainability virtuous cycle so that open source can continue. Um, so there's just a ton of stuff that hasn't been built yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And uh, that's all that I have to say. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.